The first way you're going to make a good relationship is this. Be clear and agree on your relationship and marital goals. Be clear. Be clear and agree on what? Your relationship and marital goals. If you want to, all of you that are married, if you want to improve your relationship, be clear about the thing you want to improve in your relationship. What do we want? For example, in this marriage, what kind of marriage do we want? Do we contribute to support the family? Or is it only the man that what? That supports the family. Which one is right? Which one? You contribute 50-50 or only the man? It's what you want. It's what you want. As far as there's no financial problems. But just be clear. So you can come from a background where your father is the only one that does everything. Meanwhile, your husband comes from a background where it's what? 50-50. Then the two of you, you not tell why bring 50 percent Why should I bring 50%? Why should I join you and pay house rent? Are you not man enough? But those are the discussion you must have before time. Be clear. How many children do you want to have? If you don't have a boy, is it a problem? Some people, if they don't have a boy, it's a problem. I don't have any male, any female child. It's not a problem. Someone said, don't have a, don't want a female child. I said, all the people I pastor, are they not females? If the area you want to improve your life is sex, you agree on your sexual goal. How many times is sex okay in a week? You need to agree on what you want. Agreement helps expectation. Be clear. Be clear about the relationship you want. In my family, our family stay with us. So once you marry me, one or two persons will be staying so from time to time. Simple. Ah, I don't like that. Okay, let's have a new method. We'll rent a house as a family house. That's where they'll be staying. Simple. See, the things, oh, can I say this to you? The things you don't talk about is what? Is what you will fight about. And many relationships are one conversation away from improvement. Many relationships are what? One conversation away from improvement. Just one conversation, everything the trap is this, in this kind of teaching, you have many goals for your marriage that the goals will overwhelm you. I think you should take one goal at a time and solve it. Why do couples drift? The first reason why couples drift is this. They lose mutual respect for one another. A good case in the Bible is a lady called Micah. Micah is Saul's daughter. David was dancing before God. And David's wife looked at David and says, Why are you dancing like an idiot? I mean, this man looked like a husband that was the king and say, why are you dancing like an idiot? And David did not take it slowly. David wired her back. He said, it is this idiot dance that made God give me your father's throne. If Michael respected David, she shouldn't have said so. If David respected Michael back, he shouldn't have responded the way. There was a time that this guy that you loved, when he's coming to your house, you will spend one hour in the kitchen cooking. You'll be cooking all sorts. You will never cook. It was house that I used to cook. But now that he's coming, you'll be in the kitchen. Oh, 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 oh. Even your mother knows that your boyfriend is coming. But now that you're married, you say, oh boy, I can't come and kill myself. Oh, enter the kitchen and cook yourself. It's not as if you must cook all the time. That's not what I'm saying. Because some people cannot cook, but they can coordinate the cooking. But it's the way you say that, ah, please, don't kill me. Oh. The same thing. When it used to be a birthday, when you just got married or when you were dating. Ha! One week before the birthday, you start sending flowers. You send flowers, you send cake. In our office, they know you. That throughout our birthday month, you are the one that will finish your office with so many surprises. You will contact our colleagues. But now you are married and the three years in marriage, you even forgot her birthday. She was one that reminded you in the evening. Honey, today's my birthday. You say, hey, today? Oh my God. And what happens and why couples drift is this. You begin to take each other for granted. And why do you do that? Because familiarity breeds disrespect. It's called sea finish. So you need to build into your relationship opportunity for you guys to always respect one another. They have fundamental issues. When you get drunk, affect every other thing. Many of you men, when you want to marry someone, you say, ah, you know, I was just helping her, just helping her. I just asked you to marry her. You know, remember, brother Bob the builder, be careful. You are building, building. Your wife is not a project, it's your partner. The same thing with ladies. Ladies also do it. Mother Teresa's. They are the one that will say, I want to invest in him. I want to invest. I'm not saying don't invest in where you want to marry. But you need to know the difference between a project and a partner. So you will see people that invest in him. He went to university. They pay for the masters. He's not in America. He, she now, now sends him and says, honey, I cannot thank you enough for all that you have done in my life. I see you as my God sent help. You see the problem. He sees you as God sent help. You see him as partner. The reason I'm saying so is this. If you want to help, help. Separate project from partnership. When you help somebody, when they are strong, if you now want to marry, say, now you're strong. Help is over. Do you think we should come partners? Some people, you marry because someone got pregnant. That's one of the dumbest things I hear in my life. Those are foundational problems. 
foundational problems. There's something about consistent chorus that wearies the soul. It's just exhausting. It's just exhausting. And you know, surprisingly, some of you are trained to fight. Don't you know them? Even when I was from secondary school, I noticed. From secondary school, I went to boarding house. I noticed people that were in a fight every week. In my whole boarding school, I'm not sure if I ever fought someone one day. But I know people that every week they were fighting. Because they were born in a fight zone. And you know the thing? People that quarrel a lot or argue a lot, they think that they can argue because they do it a lot. They can argue and get on with it. They don't know that for most of the time, the other person, it takes a toll on the soul. If you're going to be successfully married, you must learn to overlook. I say, it's okay. Overlook and look away. Overlook is that you saw it, but you looked over it. Look away is that you don't recognize it. What is fake love? There are issues to fight about, but you don't fight about it because you love each other. Who you love, you never fight with them. What is fake love? Fake love tells you that when you love each other, you never fight. True love tells you sometimes you have to fight to make the love stronger, but fight with respect and love. But fake love says, no, 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 Pretend there's nothing happening. Pretend, 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 so you pretend. So when your partner does something, you're like, hmm, this one is sent flower. What's he up to? What's he up to? You, you are thinking like a scientist. It's, everything is an experiment. You are, your partner is being authentic, but you are being strategic. Joint account. Hmm. Well done. Well done. I know. Meanwhile, the guy is thinking of nothing. Meanwhile, the girl, the girl is thinking of nothing. Your, your wife just says, let's do joint account. Say, joint account. Because you've read meaning into joint accounts. And you need to ask yourself, this expectation I have, is it real or false? A lot of people are paying for what your ex did. You need to stop it. You know, you just have trust issues. Nobody is born with trust issues. There's no baby that has trust issues. Have you seen anybody that has trust issues? No baby, they want to throw the baby up. And the baby says, don't throw me. No. It's over time they learn it. Because every baby was born without fear. Every baby was born what we total trust. But as we go through life, we learn fear. That's why a baby see a cobra and wants to pick it up with the hand. He doesn't have fear. So this fear you have of relationship, where do you get it from? He's from somewhere. This fear of men or women, where do you get it from? He's from somewhere. You need to deal with your own emotional baggage. If your soul is not healthy, your marriage will not be healthy. If your soul is bleeding, your marriage will be bleeding. If your soul is bleeding, your relationship will be bleeding. If your soul is hurting, your relationship will be hurting. It's just that simple. So before you think of how to make your relationship work, the first thing you have to talk about is how to heal your soul. One of the ways you know you have emotional baggage is you have flashbacks. So when something happens, you just flash back to your last boyfriend, flash back to age five, flash back to age seven. That's because there's something in your past that's speaking to the present. Well, you don't do the emotional baggage, you begin to lack empathy. Oh yes. You, you don't have the capacity to empathize with your partner. The reason why is that you are in so much pain, your pain has consumed you. You are in so much pain, your pain has consumed you. And that's why you think your partner is selfish. Listen to me, sometimes your partner is not selfish, he's not self-centered. They are just consumed by the pain of their hurt. They cannot pay attention to you. And that's why I tell people in our church, if you break up, give it some time before you date again. Or else the person you date will not see the real you. He will see the hurting you and break up with you. Because when people have emotional baggages, one of the things they struggle with is this. They begin to, they lack empathy because it's survival. You don't understand. When a, God forbid you're on a plane that is crashing, you don't think of helping your neighbor. If your plane is crashing, you don't say, we, no, you don't think of, even if your child is there, you will save yourself first. That's what happens when people are going through pain or in survival mode. They are so focused on helping themselves, they can't help somebody else.